This week on Tech Buzz, we're skimming the surface of Microsoft's tablet. Plus, a live demo of how a mobile phone is hacked. And we zoom in on Canon's new pint sized DSLR. If you've been patiently waiting for the Microsoft Surface tablet to arrive in Singapore, we have some good news and bad news. The good news, it's finally here. The bad news is the Microsoft Surface RT version only. The Pro version isn't here yet. Here are the top 5 things you need to know about the Surface RT. Number 5. The Microsoft Surface RT runs on an ARM processor, the NVIDIA Tegra 3. ARM chips generally have better power management, so you can expect the RT's battery life to be as long as a tablet's rather than a laptop. Number 4. The new Microsoft Office comes preloaded on the Surface RT, but you won't get Outlook. Also, only apps from the Windows Store will be able to run on the tablet. Number 3. Currently, there are about 50,000 apps on the Windows Store. While it's grown quite a bit, this number still lags behind the iOS and Android platforms. Number 2. Microsoft's keyboard accessories will also be sold here, either bundled with the tablet or sold separately. The key difference between the touch and type covers is that the touch keys don't travel. The type cover is more suitable if you're planning to use the Surface as a laptop substitute. And number one, Microsoft has announced that the Surface RT will be available in Singapore from April 5th. The 32GB version costs 668 Singapore dollars, while the 64GB model costs 798 Singapore dollars. And if you buy both the tablet and touch cover together, you'll get a better deal. The Canon EOS 100D is probably the smallest DSLR currently on the market. The entry-level DSLR has an 18-megapixel CMOS sensor, same as the 650Ds. It's capable of 1080p video recording as well as burst mode capture at 4 frames per second. The 100D arrived in our labs this week for us to take a closer look. The palm-sized camera has a 3-inch touch screen so that you can touch to focus, swipe to scroll, and pinch to zoom. A nice touch is the in-camera creative filter mode, which lets you preview the effect before applying it to the image. We think the 100D will appeal to those who are looking for a lightweight and portable DSLR, especially while travelling. Local pricing is not available yet, but the camera and kit lens will retail at US$800 in the US. Canon has also announced the EOS 700D and PowerShot N for Singapore. The 700D is the follow-up to the EOS 650D and will cost US$900 in the US. The Wi-Fi-enabled Ultra Compact PowerShot N will cost US$399. All three cameras will be sold in Singapore and April. I'm sure we've all heard stories about Android malware and how important it is to have some form of mobile security software installed. But what happens when your phone is facing a malicious threat? We got a hacker to show us just how it's done and how it affects your phone. Meet Rick Ferguson. He's an ethical hacker, also called a white hat. For the purpose of this demo, he has a non-rooted Android phone which has a Trojan app installed and another handset to send commands to the affected phone. So if we actually look on the Android device um, and look at the apps and look at what's running on the device, you'll see there's actually nothing suspicious running at all. Send a message that simply establishes the telephone number of the controlling device. So I'm sending a message that just says, this is your master. You'll notice on the Android device that there's no notification that a text has been received. There is a notification that my balance just went down because this is a pay-as-you-go phone. But actually, if you look in the, in the notifications on the device itself, it doesn't say that any text message was received at all. But we did get a reply back from the Android device that says, I'm ready to serve you. So now we know that we have control over that device. Having control over that device means many things. It means, for example, we can send um, another command, let's say, uh, SMS spy enable. Now, anytime this device receives a text message from anywhere else, um, it will be copied into a text file and stored in local storage on this device. We could send another command, for example, um, call spy enable. So now when there's an incoming telephone call to this device, it will be intercepted and recorded and stored 
again, on local storage on the Android device. There are other commands, for example, we can enable the video camera, um, we can take stills with the camera, because all of those permissions were granted to that Trojan app when it was installed. All this data is encrypted and unsearchable on the affected device. Rick showed us that a command can be sent to the Android phone to zip up and upload the files on a website. A download link is then sent to the hacker's handset and at the same time erasing the information from the affected phone. While such an extreme scenario won't happen to most people, you should still pay attention to the app that you're installing as well as the permissions it requires. And that's all for TechBuzz this week. Thanks for watching and see you next week. I'm Jacqueline, buzzing out.